Welcome to the Sharp 600 brought to you by Covers.com. Give us 600 seconds and we'll give you the tools you need to improve your handicapping. As always, it's great to have all of you guys in with us today. My name is Joe Fortenball, and here's what we have in store for the Week 9 NFL Podcast. It feels like this guy and I have been talking sports betting for close to a decade. That's actually probably because we have been. Uh, he's a real good friend of mine named Rob Pozzola from Prediction Machine. He's going to jump on in a couple minutes to break down the Week 9 card. We'll follow that up with three picks we really like this week as we look to build upon last week's 2-1 and record, as well as that Thursday night football win we recorded with the Jets over the Bills. But we begin this episode with a reminder. Talked about it a bit last week, played it a few weeks ago, but there's a trend to keep in mind regarding two games on the Week 9 schedule. Since 2015, teams that have played in London and then gone on the bye have come off that bye to go 9 0 oh, and 1 against the spread. Most recently, it happened with the New Orleans Saints. Week 4, they played in London. Week 5, they were on the bye. Week 6, they hammered the Detroit Lions in New Orleans. London, bye week, cash. That's the formula we're following. So, since 2015, teams that have played in London, then gone on the bye, then come off it. When they come off it, 9 0 oh, and 1 against the spread. Two teams fit that mold this week. Number one, the Los Angeles Rams. Two weeks ago in London, they hammered the Arizona Cardinals 33 to nothing. They went on their bye. Now they're laying three at New York against the Giants this week. I hate laying points with road favorites in the NFL, but I love this trend. Love this trend. So we're going to keep a very close eye on the Rams laying three at New York. The other team would obviously be the Arizona Cardinals. Hammered by the Rams two weeks ago in London, 33 to nothing. They go on the bye. Travel to San Francisco to play a very banged up Niners team in Santa Clara this weekend, laying in the neighborhood of one and a half to two points. I would also keep a very close eye on Arizona. Pay that man his money. Rob Pizzola is set to join us in just a moment. But first, on your marks, get set. The Ultimate Race is back at covers. The Fall 2017 Ultimate Race will start on Monday, November 13th, with your chance to vie for $10,000 in cash and prizes, including a $5,000 grand prize and weekly prize packs. The rules are simple. Make a maximum of four picks each day, and the first person to reach 200 wins the race. Go to our contest homepage on covers.com and register now. The race starts on November 13th, so start your engine. <laughs> Additionally, you've been asking and we've been listening. We're excited to announce that we're gearing up to launch the Covers Online Pro Shop. Soon, you'll be able to purchase some sweet Covers swag just in time for the holidays. Follow us on Twitter or Facebook and register your email to get notified and be the first to know when the Covers Pro Shop opens its doors. A blast from the past as this guy is one of my best buds from the business. You can follow him on Twitter at Rob Pozzola, the general manager at Prediction Machine, Rob Pozzola, joining us here on the Sharp 600. Rob, I usually start these podcast interviews by jumping right into content, but dude, it's been so long since we've talked. How's everything going? Everything's good, man. It's uh, Football season's been a bit of a grind. Obviously, you know how that is with NFL and college going on, just a ton of games, and now we add in the daily sports and the NBA and NHL for myself, I'm a big NHL better. It's just a crazy time of year, but everything going smoothly right now. Great to hear. Great to hear indeed. Let's jump right into it now. We'll start with the marquee game on the afternoon slate. The Dallas Cowboys are now laying two and a half, hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the news came down Friday morning that Ezekiel Elliott would play in this game. Kansas City 9-1 and one against the spread over their last 10 road games. I know you keep a real close eye on Dallas. How do you see this one shaking down? Yeah, I always have to tell people that I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, but I'm pretty unbiased when it comes to predicting Cowboys games. I can tell you, uh, you know, I can bet against them if I need to. I can bet on them if I need to. I think this is a good spot for Dallas. I've been looking for a spot to fade Kansas City for a while. I actually tried it on Monday Night Football, and I lost at the Broncos. But that scoreline was very misleading. Kansas City dominated that game early on. But the Broncos really pushed in that game later on, and 
The thing with the Chiefs is that they got out gained by a yards per play basis in that game. They generated five turnovers. That's why they won the game, and that's why they won by 10 points. But when you look at the Chiefs' peripherals right now, I don't think people will realize how bad their defense is. They're giving up six yards per play this year. That's one of the worst defenses in all of football. So, yeah, everyone wants to talk about the improvement on offense, but the regression on defense has been too much. And they give up almost five yards per carry. That's not a recipe for success against the Cowboys. People will talk about the Cowboys losing at home to the Rams and the Packers earlier this year. There was one common denominator in both those games. Sean Lee wasn't on the field for the Cowboys' defense. It's much better defense when he's in their linebacking core. So for me, it's Dallas or nothing this week. It's getting to the point where Dallas is almost unbettable at two and a half or even if it hits three. But still, I'd side with the Cowboys at home. Atlanta laying two at Carolina. Something stinks here for me. I know the Falcons are four and three, but they're three plays away, one against Chicago, one against Detroit, and one against the Jets, from being one and six this season, and yet they're laying points at Carolina. Does Kelvin Benjamin mean that much? I don't think it's Kelvin Benjamin. I actually think that the Falcons are one of those teams that if you're a sharp better, you typically use yards per play in a lot of your evaluations, and the Atlanta Falcons lead the NFL in net yards per play right now. They're a team that's been very efficient on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. The problem for them is they haven't been punching it in in the red zone. Last year, one of the best red zone offenses in all of football. This year, they can't score touchdowns. They're settling for field goals. They're turning the ball over more. But eventually, that stuff is going to sort of regress back to the norm. And Atlanta's got way too many red zone weapons for this to happen forever. Julio Jones, obviously Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman, Mohamed Sanu is a great target as well. So I'm not surprised by the move and shift to Atlanta. I think Carolina's another team that we could potentially fade going forward. Just the trade of Kelvin Benjamin leaves them with really no weapons on offense. Christian McCaffrey is going to catch a lot of balls out of the backfield. But that's about it. This is all going to fall on Cam Newton right now. And the last two weeks, he's struggled. They have 20 points in the last two weeks. So I'm not surprised by the move. I actually like Atlanta this week. I use them in my super contest plays this week. Can you, in good conscience, lay three points with the Raiders on the road at Miami on Sunday night? Absolutely not. And I know Miami is really bad. They're one of the worst teams in football. Again, I'll go back to net yards per play. Their offense this season averaging just about 4.1 yards per play, which is horrible. It's, it's much, much worse than any other offense in the NFL. But I don't know what Oakland has done to deserve this number. If they lose to Kansas City a couple weeks ago, which was a very close game influenced by referees on Thursday night, they're riding a six-game losing streak into this game and favored on the road. I can't really get to this number. I made Oakland about a one-point favorite in this game. You know, again, Miami is really bad, but it's a home game, primetime home game for them. Jay Cutler coming back, and they got blown out in primetime last week on Thursday Night Football. A lot of people are going to remember that game, but that was Matt Moore. He was just chucking all over the field. Baltimore's defense was doing a lot. Oakland doesn't have Baltimore's defense. So, for me, it's Miami or nothing in this game, and I actually use the Dolphins as well in my Super Contest plays. Similar question, Monday Night Football. You've got Detroit and Matthew Stafford laying two, two and a half on the road at Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers is out, but do you want to lay points with Detroit on the road in a big spot like this at Lambeau? I certainly don't. This is one where I'm hesitant to take either side. I think a couple of years ago I would gladly back Green Bay in this spot, home dog in prime time. I'm not a big fan of the Lions, but Detroit did show me something last week. Despite the fact that they lost to the Steelers, they actually outplayed Pittsburgh, who I think is the best team in football right now, and they did it pretty convincingly. Unfortunately, same problem with Atlanta. They couldn't punch it in in the red zone. They had all those trips into Pittsburgh territory, settled for field goals, got stopped on fourth down. It was just a big mess for them on offense. You know, Green Bay has the bye. That's always concerning. A young quarterback like Brett Hundley, maybe they get it together over the bye week. But I didn't see much out of him against the Saints. Everyone wants to talk about the Saints defense being so improved this year. I personally don't think it's that improved. I think a lot of it has to do with the quality of quarterbacks that they face so far this season. So for me, it's not a game that I touch. You know, I'm looking at it right now, the line Detroit lane two, that's probably where, right around where I think it would be. So for me, it would be a pass on Monday Night Football. What's your philosophy on six-point teasers? Some people love them, some people avoid them. You've got teams this week like New Orleans that you can take from six and a half to a half, Philadelphia from minus seven and a half to minus one and a half, the Jaguars from minus five and a half to actually catching half a point, Seattle's sitting there at seven, you can knock them down to minus one. Do you look for any value in six-point teasers? Absolutely. So a lot of people think that teasers are a sucker's bet. I hear that all the time. I just think a lot of people are uneducated on how to properly form a teaser. So for me, there are some key factors when I'm teasing games. I'm looking typically for games with low totals. I don't want to play games with high totals that are in the 50s because those games have a lot more variance, a lot more potential for blowouts and more points being scored. So those are games that I X off right away. 
And then obviously you want to bring games through key numbers. So for me, I love teasing games through two key numbers, which is three and seven. If I can take a seven and a half or to nine and a half point favorite and tease them all the way down to two and a half points or less, I love to do that. I also like to do the opposite, where you get a one point underdog to a two and a half point underdog, and then you bring them up over seven and a half. So there are a couple of games that will fit that profile this week. Philadelphia would be one of them at home to Denver. I'm not in love with the spot for Philadelphia, but I think that they should win at home. Seattle in a similar situation at home, a seven and a half point favorite right now. You can bring them down to half point favorite. And then the underdogs that we talk about, you know, typically I'd like to tease teams up, but Kansas City, Dallas, it doesn't really fit that profile because you have a really high total in that game. Green Bay on Monday night would fit the profile. Getting two points at home, you can bring them up to an eight-point underdog in that spot. So for me, I think teasers are very valuable plays in the NFL. People just don't understand how to do them right. But uh, looking at the board this week, there are definitely a few on the board that are, are worth a shot. Any sides or totals on the Week 9 card that we haven't hit on yet that you think we should keep an eye on? Yeah, for me, it's already moved off the key number of seven. But I like the Bucks a lot this week against the Saints. I made this game about four and a half, and – everyone's talking about New Orleans right now, and yes, they're riding this winning streak, but let's evaluate New Orleans as a whole. Week one and week two, they played two very efficient offenses. I'm laughing almost saying this, but the Vikings offense it was week one, just destroyed that, and then the Patriots in week two, that they, they moved the ball with efficiency against New Orleans as well. Since then, what have they done? They beat Cam Newton, which that offense is not what it used to be. They've beaten a beat-up Matt Stafford in that game, and again, I don't think the Lions' offense is very good. They beat Brett Hundley, Mitch Trubisky, Jay Cutler. These are the quarterbacks that they've gone up against. So everyone wants to talk about this improvement. The Saints' defensive metrics are not good, and they've actually faced a, a bunch of below-average quarterbacks this year. So... I'm not in love with Tampa Bay at all as a team. I don't like their defense. There's some main injuries. There's Brent Grimes out. But I think they can match points with New Orleans. That's a team that I'd be looking at backing this week as an underdog. I think they could win outright as well. Follow him on Twitter at Rob Pozzola. He's the general manager at Prediction Machine. Rob Pozzola joining us here on the Sharp 600. Buddy, it's always good catching up with you. It's especially good to talk some football with you. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. All right, thanks. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me. It says here we should work in teams. Who wants to be my spotter? Two and one with our week eight picks. We also cashed on Thursday night with the Jets over the Bills, meaning we've won three of our last four. Let's see if we can keep it moving. How about some music? All right, game number one, you know it. It's the Rams minus three at the Giants. We've laid the trend out before. Teams playing in London, then going on the bye. When they come off the bye since 2015, 9-0-1 9-0-1 against the spread. The Giants 5-12-1 against the number over their last 18 games when coming off the bye. We'll lay the three with Jared Goff and company in game number one. Game number two, I hate to go against Pozzola on this one, but I'm going to take Carolina plus two against Atlanta. I think the public's fading Carolina because, in part, of the Kelvin Benjamin trade, but let's take a look at this Atlanta football team. They're four and three, but essentially they're one play against Chicago, one play against Detroit, and one play against the Jets from being one and six instead of four and three. This is not the team we remember from last season. This one won't be pretty. That's why we want the two points in our pocket with the Panthers. Game number three, I'm going to lay it with the Saints. Six and a half over Tampa Bay. The Bucs covered the spread in week two at home against the Bears. And uh, and then that was it. Yeah, as in the Bucs haven't covered a single spread since. Quarterback Jameis Winston is banged up. The offense is a mess. The Saints are 10-2 and two against the number over their last 12 against the NFC South. We'll lay six and a half with New Orleans. Game number four will take two and a half with Kansas City over Dallas. Of course, the Ezekiel Elliott news hurts this play, but Kansas City on the road, 9-1 and one against the spread over their last 10 away games. Dallas at home under Jason Garrett, 21-35-1 and one against the spread. I like Andy Reid to go into Dallas and take down the Cowboys. That, boys and girls, is it for this week's installment of the NFL podcast here at the Sharp 600. Thank you for tuning in. If you get a chance, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Best of luck this weekend. Be well. We'll catch you next week.